This is It's All Been Done Radio Hour, and I'm creator Jerome Wetzel. The last five weeks, you've gotten to enjoy an episode of our scripted podcast, It's All Been Done Radio Hour. Normally, the weekly podcast will bring you more installments of those five programs, uh, as well as occasionally a bonus episode of some bundled fake commercials tossed in. This week, however, is something a little different, and we're going to give this to you probably about nine or ten times this year, and, and then again next year as well until we get the entire troop in. And basically what these episodes are going to consist of is a one-on-one conversation between me and one of the troop members. That way we'll get to know who they are, how they got involved in the show, um, what their process is, what's their story behind their characters, and that sort of thing. So hopefully that'll give you a little more insight into who we are and what our process is and who these wonderful performers um, are outside of their characters. For show information, uh, please go to itsallbeendoneradiohour.com. We do a live performance in Columbus, Ohio every month and would love for you to join us. You can also find audition packet information on our website if you'd ever like to guest star in an episode. Thank you very much, and please enjoy the show. So welcome out to the first episode of It's All Been Done Radio Hour's Meet the Cast. I decided to start with an easy one who's going to be a little bit different than most because I've actually known this cast member for a very long time. Probably the... Two days. You know me two days. Two days. I think you're actually... I think I've actually known you (laughs) second longest in the cast. I think I met Nathan before you. Okay. So this is somebody that not only I've known a really long time, but came into the project months ahead of anyone else, and that is Nick Argenbright. Hello. And obviously his voice from that hello should sound familiar (laughs) because he voices uh, Captain Kake. That's correct. I am the captain of the USS Thrifty. ASS Thrifty. ASS Thrifty. Do I know your own ship? I don't. It's very difficult. I'm a very busy man, James. (laughs) Very busy. (laughs) Hitting on women all the day. It's beating him off with a stick. And while you guys have only heard him perform in one episode, <laughs> we're actually we're actually getting ready to do them, the seven well, we've already done six episodes of Universe Journey, so it really uh, is no excuse for not knowing the ship uh, at this point. No. Well that's the thing, it's one of those things is that I you don't I don't say the ship's name that much. Right. I say the fact, narrator does. I don't remember off the top of my head. I and this is not spoiling I don't remember the name of the Federation that the ship is the part ASS. of. That's what it is yes. officially. It's the AS. Okay. ASS. Because I keep thinking, well, okay. And one of these days, for... I will reveal what ASS stands for because I haven't yet decided. <laughs> 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 so the first thing I wanted to ask you, and yeah. I will be asking every cast member this, is how did you get involved with It's All Been Done Radio? I don't remember anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I don't? really do, I don't because I, I don't. Uh, is it okay to plug stuff? Yeah. I feel weird doing this here. So I do a podcast with you and Nathan, mm-hmm. who is another cast member, Good, the Bad, and the Geeky. Mm-hmm. And, uh, Which you founded almost 10 years ago, I think, I right? I did, yes. Nine years? Something uh, like that? I had something weird like that. Something like um, that. Well, actually, it started before that as the No Name Show. It's complicated. Right, right. So, um, and also, this is... It's, it's not always the case, mm-hmm. um, but the way that you and I work, yeah. oddly enough, together, is that we'll write something and we'll give it to the other person. So that's how we both work. So if I write something, mm-hmm. I give it to Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy writes something, he gives it to me. Mm-hmm. And I don't remember, was it Was it Universe Journey was the first one? You oh, did? yeah. And, Absolutely. Uh, which, it, it, see, I don't think they blur together, but... Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I feel like Scary Dead was the second one. You, um, you know what? I think Scary Dead was third. Was because third? that I finished don't... off the first show. Um, because I remember... The, Beside Universe Journey, Mm -hmm. uh, which was the first one I really started writing, I think my first idea was Porn Star Detectives. Yeah. God. I think that was... I think that was you and me. Like, you you were talking about it. and, and 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 you and I were just like... Joking around. Like, what if we had a sketch called Porn Star Detectives? Porn Star Detectives. Well, that was really. Mm-hmm. You said that, and then I was just like, "Yeah," and you know, they can. And they're just the worst ever. Mm-hmm. And well, no, you said they were the worst ever, and I was like, "Yeah." And then we were giving examples of how bad they were, mm-hmm. and it just like you know. And you were the one, and they would have already heard the first episode by now. Yeah. You were the one that insisted that the end of their case, somebody needed to call them on it that they didn't actually solve anything. Yeah. Yeah, Where Bruce was like, "Why are I?" Because they were all like, "We solved the case," and Bruce is like, "No." 
no, you didn't do anything. Well, you know. Which was funny. W- yeah. You're also the one that encouraged me to send them out in the real world and have them interact with real people. Right. The characters are fine, but everything else around them needs to be real. Mm-hmm. And, and especially with Porn Star Detectives, which is the most ludicrous one of all. And uh, I'm proud of this one, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, what was my other thing I told you to do with Porn Star Detective? Uh, Tone it down. Oh, there not a, make it X-rated. There was an X-rated version of Porn Star I mean, Detective. the Christmas episode, which you will have not heard yet, gets pretty close. Gets, close. gets pretty but close. But still, it's tasteful. I still feel like you could have performed that maybe on as the last sketch on SNL. Not as yeah, it's not funny. Yeah, uh, because it was pretty, funny, I mean, it's I'm right talking, up there on the line. But that's what I'm saying. It's yeah. like, it's you have to air it after midnight kind of thing. And as soon as I finished it, I'm like, it's going to be a long time before we go this body again. Yeah. We'll pull well, it back. But, but the thing is, I feel like you get more laughs, too. Which is, it did get it's, laughs. It sucks but, for you. And luckily, we have two wonderful actresses that yes. sell those yeah, lines. So great. It would not work without them. Well, that's the other thing, too. Is when, uh, So... Um, going back to the original question you asked me about an hour ago. <laughs> but you, basically, you came in in the early brainstorming sessions. Right. But So you would like write all this, mm-hmm. and then I would go through with you mm-hmm. with the script, and we would read the parts back and forth to each other. Mm-hmm. Um, and we've, we've got a better system, I feel, which is we just read the, the line. doesn't matter who's the next right. line is. We just do it. Until, like, I might except just go... Except Kake. Except for, well, obviously, <laughs> now not Kake. But, um, but, like, if there's a role that I like, I'm like, I don't care if I'm never going to get this. I really want to... I just, I'm just going to do it. And sure. it might be to your chagrin, because I, you I might be doing a voice you don't like, but I like doing it's it. It's fine. Um, but, so, that's what I said. We have a nice little back and forth. Well, originally, and I don't know if I ever expressed this very blatantly to you but originally my idea when I was listening to Thrilling Adventure Hour is Acker and Blacker do it together and I was thinking oh we could write this together oh, and then yeah, at, I think I tried to like hint around it and you just didn't seem all that interested you were more just like yeah you write those I don't have time for that well, and no, so I never pushed so, it but that to, was the idea to, to also throw this out there mm-hmm. to give an example of this is that the job and Jimmy does way more than me because he's a better uh, work ethic than I do. Um, the last Christmas show, not the one we did in 2015. 2014 was written really by who? 2014? Yeah. Uh, GBG? That was by me, basically. Yeah. yeah. This year was basically all by you. Yeah. Well, right. But that's what I'm saying is that last time it was like the Jimmy show, but I was like the slave, like the task mm-hmm. driver. And like you're like doing writing 4,000 articles, you're doing your normal life stuff. And I, I was just like, yeah, because it'll be, yeah, Jimmy, I'll totally help you write it. And then it'll just be Jimmy writing off in the corner, like, he doesn't write anything. I do and feel bad that this year you were like, push it. You kept saying about, oh, we need to write sketches, and I just didn't. No, that's on me, too. And then, well, okay, yeah. so another So I pulled the same thing on you, basically. My, my poor work ethic fed it. But it ended up being okay, though. No, it was very good. It, I no, liked it, it a lot. Being, it, you've inspired, with your stuff, has inspired me, and uh, you've helped me. Um, so, yeah, you came in to help with story stuff, mm-hmm. and you have continued to read every script before it goes out to the cast. And I give tried me, to. Well, there was one point where you're just like, I didn't figure I wanted to bother you with it. I was like, no, please bother me I think me you with still it. did get to read it before it went out to the cast, but it got to the point where a lot of the scripts I give you anymore, you're just like, eh, it's good. Well, actually, well, you're getting into a, a mode, I think, where, like, I mean, if I, well, no, if I really feel like something needs to be added, I'll, sure. I'll let you know. I just really don't feel like, um... Yeah, you don't, you haven't changed your input too much recently, but you did uh, recently send me actually several pages of a Universe Journey episode yeah. that I'm going to incorporate in. I, I want to talk to you after this, because okay. it'll be spoiler heavy, because sure. I'm just curious, because, like, I don't mm-hmm. know how that'll work. I, mm. I don't care. I'm I read excited. through it and I can use a lot of it. Okay. So I was really proud about one. Yeah, never mind. We can't okay. talk about this. But hopefully, maybe you'll yeah, start to to be... write a bit for for the. No, film. I I would like to. Um, well, that's but. the thing is that Top Notch Tangler is one that I really because um, oh, I'm a I'm a big comic book fan. Mm. So that is just like oh, just add a lot of already. alliteration and you're good. And then uh, Samantha Stark, who does that, is phenomenal. Oh, you're going to anyway. So. Yeah. Well. Fuck that. Sorry, okay. you can cut that too. Uh, <laughs> Next question. <laughs> okay. So we talked about how you... <laughs> so what I've just cut was Nick spoiling stuff about the Top Notch Tangler, but I want to mention that he complimented Samantha Stark very nicely. Yes, I did. For Samantha her wonderful Stark, performance uh, and I worked, as the Top Notch Tangler. I, I threw it out there, too, is that I... Uh, you can thank me for her, too. Oh, I, I do. <laughs> uh, because I work with her. Uh, and I, did, was... I did. At, at my co- company I can't name right. um, because I just don't want to get in trouble. Uh, and she's an extremely, extremely valuable just, part of the um, cast. 
Yeah, uh, I would work with her in the same room, mm -hmm. and before she got a different job in the same company, um, she would tell me about her podcast. I would do her stuff, mm -hmm. and when I did the Christmas show, I was like, it's a guy's club. I really need sure. a girl, and then she helped out, and then I just jokingly told her, actually, mm -hmm. I told her about porn star detectives, and she loved oh, it. Oh, I told, I told her about porn stars at your house, because I yeah. remember pitching it to her, and she's like, I need to be in it, yes. and I was like... Well, you know, we're going to do cast a wide net audition, which, bringing back around, yeah. it, I did the same thing to you. Because your long history with me, we haven't mentioned this, that I've uh, known you for over 25 years at this point. Sort you lightly touched it. Um, but Not, you originally... <laughs> yes! You, you originally, Never when I that. started uh, showing you scripts and going through characters, immediately you wanted Kake. You toyed with Meow Meow for a little bit, but you wanted well, Kake. I wanted either one of them because they're both like such great characters. But yeah. the further we went on, the less you were seemed interested in Meow Meow. Well, because of can, Shane's can, audition. Can, can, can I also say yeah. that you would also you because before when I done, mm -hmm. I've not done like casting sites or whatever. You did the full gamut. You threw uh, it out I threw there it everywhere. You know, yeah. Why not? And I think the first one that you got, I, I could be wrong, was Shane. It was, was doing his meow, meow meow was the very first audition and we got. I listened to and it, and he got cast. So. And and well, I just remember you're like, it sounds good, but we still got time for auditions. Well, or that's whatever. Uh, but I and, uh, and I remember I, saying he set a really high bar to beat. Right, that's true. Mm -hmm. you, you did say that. So, but I was just like, well, that rule. So that leaves for the most part Kake, unless you know. Either or, I was really excited, and then uh, and I like, really didn't want to cast you as Kake, right? Because before, when I would do Kake, it would be um, it, that very, wasn't why. That I thought you were saying. Though. I thought I thought you were saying it was very. It was too like um, you did go a little in. zap branding in for a bit, but I knew you could reel it in. The reason I was hesitant to cast you is because I know you can do a lot of goofy voices, and I figured that's with right. Universe yeah, Journey we have a lot of aliens, and yes. I would like to use you as a bit player. As a, I'm not as. I, 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 mm -hmm. I, that's one of my hardest things. That's one of the things I got to overcome. Is that, mm -hmm. like, when you're in, in animation, you, sure. you're supposed to just walk and look at a storyboard, look mm -hmm. at read, and you are supposed to get a voice and go. Uh -huh. Shane can do that. Oh, absolutely. And I have a little bit of a problem. You know, I just mm -hmm. go back to whatever I think I can do, and then I. Um, that's why I think uh, a character that you will hear eventually. Um, uh, I think in episode three or four of Daniel Kravitz. Ah, yes. Let's tease that. I think don't, it's episode please three. Don't cut that. No, just yeah, say, no. I'm really excited about. I that think character. you're the the monster in the third episode. I'm the I'm yes. And episode. yeah, you did a wonderful job I, with that. I, but but I, I don't remember how I came up with that voice. I was goofing around. I remember the first voice you gave me. I was having trouble understanding you, and I was like, I need the, the words to be clear. It is fishy bibbit, fishy bibbit, am I? Yes. But, so, but uh, I, I really, yeah. I love that. No. But that's when I came up, because like mm -hmm. if you listen to uh, Billy West talk mm -hmm. about Zoyberg, yeah. he talks about Jackie Mason a little bit. He talks mm -hmm. like this, holy, 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 and then you just drag the marbles in your mouth. Right. And then, but I, so I did something similar to that, and I was so proud of that. It actually, it didn't sound anything like Zoyberg. It was actually no, no, no. a completely I, I original creation. Right, right. Like, like, like that's of how you built the character. How you built the character. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm not at all doing No, 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 not at all. Um, so, uh, but so look forward to that. I, I'm really proud of Kake. But Kake, is, I love Kake. Well, and, and like you mentioned, yeah. I cast a very wide net with auditions. Yes. And when I did that, I set a deadline for auditions. And I refused to cast anybody until that deadline. Yep. Because I wanted to give everybody a you fair shake. You still do. You still do. I still do. Wait till the deadline <laughs> to cast. Drives some people crazy. But some, char <laughs> some characters I build around certain members of the troupe. But there are any yeah. character that's open to audition, I set a deadline and everybody has until then. And I'll listen to an audition, but I will not even come close to deciding. And so you, for months, were petitioning for Kake, oh, and you yes. kept toning the voice, and I kept saying, I really don't want to cast you as Kake. <laughs> and then I sat down... And I listened to all the auditions, and we were fortunate enough to get a huge number of auditions. We had to cut a bunch of people and really pick the ones who I wanted. Who was your number two, and be honest? For Kake? Yeah. Oh, I don't remember now. It's been months. Was it months. someone who was, who's already in the troupe? It's got to be, because I'm, I'm just I, I feel like I used all the best auditions as Fair people enough. in the troupe. I, I'm just, um, it was one of those random curiosities sure. that I never asked you, because I was just like, I'm Kake, yes. And I, well, like, I've uh, saved every audition, so I'm sure we could go back and figure it out. But at the moment, I cannot tell you who was my second choice. Fair enough. Uh, but out of all those auditions, 
And some people may accuse me of being biased, but I feel like Not I can all. be pretty objective. You you were you were pretty harsh to me the entire oh. process up until well, considering like if that well, was the I case, you'd be mean, like you'd yeah. be like. You're not gonna get it, wink. That wasn't at no, all. No, like, no, no. I'm not. I really don't want you to have it. No, yeah. I really, I really think you'd be good in these other voices. And also, like, if you're all, audi- your thing was like, if your audition holds up, we'll find out. I'm gonna. When the and you can ask. Is, and I'm Nathan's just like, the one who gets really upset if he. Yeah, because Nathan wanted he cocky wants too. favoritism. He wants favoritism um, because he's known me even longer than you have. And I built an entire freaking character. He's Daryl Kravitz was the last character built, and it was built around him. With that was the only character nobody audition that's true that i didn't even open up to auditions yeah because it was built for him can, but now he expects that any party once he can have and i haven't given no, him every party once not at all no As a matter of fact and sometimes so, it will be after the show yeah, and he'll, he'll be shitting pissed. his he'll be recording his yeah. edition real quick yeah. to send you before the cutoff time no tomorrow. we have a troop of 15 and we have guest roles right. coming in but and so i pick who i feels the best even at the risk of hurting feelings which oh. i do feel bad about so it's when i worst, say i it? picked and so I'll say when I picked Nate, Nick for Kake, I strongly felt he was the best audition I got I for the role. So hands down. For that. I uh, I feel it was very much earned. It was. It, uh, thank you. I will. Yeah, it's your words. I just. Bring it we on. can tease a little bit uh, that you have another major character that will be coming up on the Top Notch Tangler, a reoccurring role. Oh yeah. You are playing the uh, henchman Greg. I I am. Who will be seen multiple times. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> it depends on what the boss wants to do. So um, no, that's a fun character. I, it's a, I, I'm enjoying. I mean, we it. can't say much about it, but no, it's a fun I, character. That's, that's actually the, the as far as the now I can swing on that. That's I'm fine. Just, the idea of the meet the cast is to actually get to know the cast member. I'm so a dick, I would first like off, no. I make fun of Jimmy all the time. Oh, he usually, does that. usually cast recording or cast rehearsals is I'm the troublemaker in the back of class, and then I start to feel bad because I'm like when I do this stuff, no one fucking listens to me. It drives me insane. <laughs> Sorry. No, that's okay. But I I would be remiss if we end this without getting to know you a bit. So, give us your background. When did you get the acting bug? When did you become involved in theater? Uh, I feel awkward now. Uh, (laughs) You see, you just didn't even want to talk about yourself on this. Probably. So that's why you deflected and talked story. Not necessarily. I love talking about myself (laughs) to an extent. I'm egotistical. So that's the first thing. I'm very egotistical. Uh, He is. I will agree with that. Uh... It all begins with a movie called Jaws. Um, I I just love that stuff, and so I I would love. I would How old it. were you when you first saw it? Mm, seven? Five, no, six or seven. And then scare the crap out of you? Oh, it scared the shit out of me. Okay. That's why I don't like going to the ocean. <laughs> what What about Jaws appealed to you and got you into uh, this role? Story like it felt the story felt adult, but I could mm-hmm. still follow it. Mm-hmm. And then also it scared the shit out of me. And then also like. I, even at that time, I was like, the performances were strong. And then, um, on top of that, uh, so, like, I was pretty well... My dad, and he, he's not a bad father, I swear. I need to preface this. My dad would, on HBO, we had HBO. We were that family, had Disney Channel HBO. Not a lot of kids, I don't think, had that. <laughs> um, so, but I had um, access to um, Predator, mm-hmm. Terminator, and at the time, Empire and Jedi, and we would watch those on repeat. I would only watch the end of Terminator and Predator because that shit is super scary. Mm. And, like, Jaws is gory, but Predator and Terminator are horribly, it's just terrifyingly scary for, like, a five-year-old, three- or five-year-old. And we, we would watch these, and my dad would watch them with me. Um, and I started becoming, and when I saw Jaws, I sort of sinks, you know, uh, cinched it for me. Like, mm-hmm. I was like, I want to do that. I want to write and tell a story that, like... The way Steven Spielberg made me feel at that age and continues to this day to make me feel like I want to do that. I, or I still, I love that kind of stuff. So at that point, Dad started getting me into like the how-to making. Like I remember at the time, it was a big deal. Uh, how to make Thriller, how to make Return of the Jedi, where like Jim Henson's Creature Shop, they show you the ins and outs of how they do like, you know, the puppets, Jabba the Hutt, and how they would do um, uh, Thriller, how they did Michael Jackson, how John Landis, the director from Animal House, directed Michael Jackson in Thriller and you'd watch all that long story short I swear to god this is, there is a point to this um, and from there I started getting into um, well what's the how do you do that kind of stuff well you get involved in creative community um, and then also school plays and um, my mom thinks I'm the best singer in the world I have an okay voice I would not do well on American Idol um, much to my mom's belief that I am God's gift to that I am truly not I, I can 
barely sing well. So, <laughs> um, you know, now after saying that, if I had the chance, I would totally sing. Right. But, uh, yeah. So, um, but, you know, you school plays, you know, you do, like, singing and stuff. Like, I'm talking about, like, not even real school plays. Like, the mm-hmm. one is where it's just, like, a fifth grade, you sing about baseball or something mm-hmm. stupid like that. And then sixth grade, middle school, that's when you do real musical plays, mm-hmm. like Wizard of Oz, or in our case, Lil Abner. Charlie Brown? Charlie Brown was my eighth grade, and I love yeah. that play. Yeah, and matter of fact, I hated, You were Charlie Brown. I was Charlie Brown. And the thing is, I hated Charlie Brown. I liked Snoopy or Linus. Mm. They are my favorite... Well, at the time, they were my favorite. And now that I'm an adult, I'm like... I like Charlie Brown because we all relate to Charlie Brown. I feel you were in a bunch of plays and musicals in high school too. What was your favorite role? Um, the one that surprised me was in high school. So there was high school, high school plays, and mm. then I actually then went did to some Columbus, community theater, yeah, the community theater in Columbus yeah. for for children. I did touring Charlotte's Web, mm-hmm. and that was a lot of fun. And I wish I stuck with it. That's like mini regret I have. Um, Charlotte's Web, and then I did Harvey. Excuse me, and at the same time. My junior year, uh, we did Sound of Music and Max Ballystock. Mm-hmm. No, 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 no. Jesus, that's the no, producer. No, no, yeah, yeah. Uh, his, the it's, Uncle it's Max. Ma- Uncle Max, a.k.a. the sla- nanny, uh, male nanny slash good friend of the uh, Christopher Plummer character, a.k.a. he's also kind of like the servant, but he's not... He's the hanger honor who just wants to be near the power and fortune, and he uses yes. and manipulates people to get what he wants. But he's fun and does it in a way that doesn't seem evil or sleazy too much. Right. And I just remember I approached it. That's the first time I actually approached a character, too. Mm-hmm. Because before, I was just like, oh, you want me to do this? Or mm-hmm. I'm goofing around, and I might approach it like this. I would never like try to shape a character. And I actually went in, and I was like, I read this character, and I feel like he's Nathan Lane. So I Uncle Max? Yeah. Huh. Like well Well he was Nathan when, Lane was Max Bialystock, so Well no, this is before yeah, yeah. that. Right, right. But no. Well because that's just why I, it's I interesting. Well, at the time mm-hmm. uh he did a uh, funny thing happened on the way on the form. We yeah. wanted Tony for that at the time with and then Whoopi Goldberg, I remember took his place. This is weird old Broadway uh trivia for you. But then uh, but I knew him really because I watched The Lion King. Mm-hmm. And and I'm big into that stuff, so I was like, oh, this guy's awesome. But, like, in Timon's a little bit like, but I found out, like, most of the roles that you watch him play are characters like that, where the moment he enters the room, everybody knows what's going on. Or the mm-hmm. eyes are on him. And Max is like that. As you say, he, he wants so, to need the power, but he's also he's sort of. a bit. A little. Yes, that is true. <laughs> so he's uh, but so he's manipulating the room to have sure. eyes on him, and that's part of his power that he has. Mm. But at the same time, he wants to be near the power. So it's a very. I just remember that, and I had a lot of fun doing that. And the thing is, is that I do not love the sound of music. I know that's. Uh, I know that's sacrilege. Horrible. I like the. I like some of the songs. I just don't love the the script. <laughs> okay. Um, which it's just not my. It's not my thing. Um, and then while doing it, though, I actually had a, a newfound appreciation for it. But, I mean, I still... It's not my favorite musical. I like uh, Little Shop of Horrors and mm. um, The Music Man. Show so, any type of theater or acting after high school? Not that I remember. Not really. I went to film school. Broadcasting film school? school? To, well, no, I did go to film school. Did you? At Wright State, but I didn't get that far to go mm. actually into the school. I went to Wright State University in, in Ohio to do filmmaking. Mm. And then I dropped out of it. Um, dropped out of Wright State, not mm-hmm. just that. And then I went to broadcasting school where I did radio and video. Mm-hmm. Um, so you still learn some of the basic stuff. It's just that you learn on a video medium. But video was the feature, and it still sort of is. Like, it's high-def digital cameras, mm-hmm. which we were learning for. And that's what they are now. Um, do you feel that broadcasting school has prepared you for a lot of stuff you do now? Sort of. I've got two questions left for you, and then we'll end it. One, what would you like to see Kake do or get into? Without spoiling, without... Uh, And you already have some foreknowledge, but I want something that isn't anywhere near what we're doing that you would like to see happen to your pet part. I would like him to... Oh, Jesus. That's a horrible question. That's Why? Like, I don't know because I mean I'm sure you feel some ownership for the character. I do, but we we talk about this. I feel like we already. do. So now I just don't know. Like, but also some of it I feel like I can't really talk about. Mm. Um, I would like a love interest that's earned. Mm-hmm. I and also I I I like the friendship thing. I would like to see a friendship similar to that of. 
Bones, Spock, and Kirk, mm. and, and not just them, but like mm. like they have in House, House and Wilson, sure. or, which is technically mm. Sherlock Holmes. It might not be in the cards, but I would like to see that. But do you feel Kake deserves a buddy yet? Um, I mean, has he really done much to endear himself to somebody? No, uh, no, not at all. But so he has to earn the buddy. I I don't disagree with that at all. Now, when you said he, you want him to have an earned love interest, is that separate from the buddy? Or are those could that be bit. the same thing? Uh, it doesn't have to be the same thing. Like um, you want him to just earn. Basically, what I feel you're getting at is you want Kake to earn his way into the affections of everybody, really, and maybe have a couple closer people. But well, yeah, cause in like, general, I I really love the idea that because it, it it truly is mm-hmm. a um, uh, uh, an ensemble. But I don't know. That's a hard question because yeah. at the end of the day, like I can think of all I want about mm-hmm. Universe Journey. I the only thing I can really do is perform it and maybe throw some stuff out there. I don't really know. Uh, I would like him also to. The I, my assumption is the crew think of him as a giant idiot, mm-hmm. and that I don't want him to become Homer Simpson. And so, I hope you've noticed in the oh, Universe yeah, Journey you've totally. read before that it is extremely important to me to not let Kake become a cartoon. Yes, um, I was just listening to the third episode today. Yeah. Uh, we were listening to it, and in that episode, you see why Kake is the captain and why he's right. in that position. So I, I, I like that. I just, I'm a, I, mm-hmm. that that is my only fear. It has nothing to do with you. It's just like mm-hmm. one of those scenes where I just like, yeah. I don't. And the thing is, he won't. He won't. I don't, don't want to wake up like ten years from now if we're still doing this and be like, "Oh, Kake is the, he's a bit of an idiot," and like, or ducktail back into that. And I don't think you'd. Like, I think he'll. I think he will still be a bit of an idiot, but I think he will have learned a lot he's along an idiot the way. In a different way. Right. Right. He's an idiot when you need him to be, but no, not for the wrong reasons. No, it's super important to me that all these characters undergo growth and change, and that it sticks. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I really like that a lot. Which is, again, and for that, it's the like, look, it's a radio show about mm-hmm. a bunch of people in a spaceship flying sure. around. It's science fiction, but the reality of the realness of what's going on between the characters is super important, and you got to play that sure. up for reals, for real, Zizio. Uh, well, that, and the last that's question bad. I have for you yes. is if you could no star wish. in one of the sketches that's not Universe Journey, which one would it be and what character would you play? It can be an actual character or a brand new character that you're pitching me right now. But what sketch would you like to be in and what part would you play in it? Why are you doing this to me? I wish you gave me that question. <laughs> you might want to give that question to someone else in advance. Because no. they can really no. think of something. Because I have no idea what it would be. Well, what's I, your favorite sketch besides Universe Journey? The, I, oh, I hate you. Um, Daniel Kravitz okay, is so sort of close. What uh, would you want to play in the Kravitz? Would know. you want to play Daniel or would you want to play a different character? Or Rufus or somebody completely original? I don't know. Um, I don't know. I just like playing weird characters. Top Notch Tangler is another one I like, even though we haven't done a lot with her too much yet, even in live stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, Porn Star Detectives, there's a part of me that loves the, uh, it's the part Shane plays, of course. Larry. I love Larry. The sex toy shop owner. I, I love that. Um, I, I can't. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> it hasn't premiered yet. Yeah. One of the commercials I would like to play one of those characters. Can we say wh- what they are? Uh, the oh, uh, the Packer Ratcliffe commercial. Yes, we could talk d- without spoiling what Packer Ratcliffe are. Oh yeah, yeah. They're just a duo that they're, are hilarious. They're yeah. They have such good chemistry. And yeah, you'd like that would be what you'd like to be in. I, I does it I, pain but, you that we are not? Because originally we were going to be Packer and Ratcliffe. Ratcliffe. But no, here's the thing though: is but that they're so good. Dallas and Chase, uh, Chase yeah. are just so freaking good. They are. Like, You'd like, want to be one of them. You don't want to be a buddy that comes in as the I third wheel. Being, I wouldn't mind being a buddy <laughs> as long as I keep. Finding we're just spitballing. I'm not actually. Oh, I planning stories. I know, but now you're like, oh. You need, they do need a buddy, don't they? Not right now, they don't. I know they don't, but they could be one day. Maybe they could need a buddy. But um, but Pack and Ratcliffe. Pack and Ratcliffe, your best. Everyone loves Pack and Ratcliffe. The, I everyone. remember the cast loves Pack and Ratcliffe. Oh, absolutely. Like we just sit in there and we just wait for them, those two to. Remember when? Remember when they happen to miss for whatever reason a rehearsal or a show? Um, Everybody fights rehearsed. over who gets to read it. Yeah, Basically. because it's it's hysterical. Oh, you know what? Who was also oh. Second episode of Daniel Kravitz, when that airs, there's mm-hmm. a character in there that is phenomenal. Mm. And I like You that like character. the monster in episode two? I love the monster in episode two. He is very good. Mm. 
everyone likes doing that voice too. I know. Um, bum, 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 bum. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, it's a hard question. Man. It is a hard I, question. I, I, I don't know. It is our question, and I purposely put you on the spot. I hate you for it. I know. Um, so I feel like this is a good place to end. We've done. 60 full minutes of talking, which when I edit it down will hopefully be more like 30, 35. Jesus Christ. <laughs> but uh, thank you for talking to me. To, I don't want to even listen to the final one. It'll just be like, it'll be like, I love this. Cut. <laughs> this no, no, no. this you, was you, a great five minute interview. <laughs> Jesus Christ, that's funny. And if you ever quit the show, I kill you. Just so you know. Oh, I'm not quitting the show. Oh, I know. Oh, I'm not quitting the show. No, you're not allowed. I, I love the show. Good. I, I love it. It's so much fun. Good. Well, thank you. And uh, yeah, thank you. We will have uh, Nathan in the next Meet the Cast episode. Jesus so you can hear more of people that have known be, me forever. Be weary, be weary, everybody. He is a he is a he is a peach. Like, Do you want to think I'm matter of fact? I have not insulted you really at all. No, you haven't. Thing. He's going to be so mean to me. He's going to be so mean to me. Is him, there but... a piece of advice you'd like to give him before his interview that he will never listen to this so he won't hear ahead of time? That's true. He doesn't listen to any podcast he's ever mm. in, any show he's ever in. Uh-huh. Um, so, uh... Ooh, real quick. Choke on it. <laughs> no, real quick. I'm going to steal this from Spontanea Nation, Paul F. Tompkins. Okay, yeah, You yeah, give yeah. me one question now that I will ask Nathan in his interview. Oh, okay. Um... Does he feel like a Eugene? <laughs> you just want him to hurt me. I do. <laughs> so, no, not really, but that will piss him off so much. I'm not going to tell him who said it. I would just be like, the previous person I interviewed, uh, if you need to know who it is, go check the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 that was so great. Yeah, I don't think we can end any better than that. So, thank uh, you guys very much. Um, look forward to some more episodes and some more Meet the Cast in a few weeks. It was a pleasure meeting you. Yeah, nice to meet you too. Ha ha. Your first thing, I'm sorry, I have like some kind of weird like hair probably from my sweater. Mm. Um, I'm wearing, I'm so sorry. This will definitely be cut out. <laughs> uh, maybe. I, maybe. I'll probably leave that. Three, two, <laughs> one. Nobody That's will get that. So now I have to cut that. that. Yeah.